Southwest Hot Chefs and Restaurants is brought to you in part by Viking, delivering the ultimate in performance and design for cooking indoors and out. Okay, so to recap, we've made our grits, we have shredded our cheese, and you have julienne and minced jalapenos. That's right. All right, what's our next step? Well, we're gonna get our elk tenderloin going and cooking. Tell me about those, where do you get those from? Uh, these steaks actually come from New Zealand. New Zealand really is a, is a, a big producer of elk and deer and such. And uh, what's fantastic is that everything is, is organic. The whole country is organic, and so you're really guaranteed a, a great product. Now, I also will What's use... What's the seasoning you just put on there? Right. This is a, a salt and pepper mixture that I use at my restaurant, just salt, black pepper, white pepper, uh, a couple little herbs and spices. Okay. All right. Just to season it up a little just bit. Just to season it up. So if someone um, hunted and butchered their own elk, they could use this same recipe if they had like a freezer full of it? Like Abs absolutely. And in fact, I went hunting on a friend's ranch a couple of years ago, and, and we really came back and used uh, this technique, and it really worked out well. Nice. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and put this on. Sizzle. You can see that we've got quite a hot pan, which is great to start out with. And we're just going to turn it down a hair. As that cooks, we're at about a medium temperature. So you start with a hot pan to get that sizzle and then turn it down to actually get them to cook a little more slowly on the inside? That's right. We want to have an even cooking process throughout the, throughout the whole steak. If we start with a real hot pan, this enamel uh, covered cast iron is going to retain the heat okay. very, very well. So you can see that that's cooking hot. away. This is really, I mean, this Viking kitchen is... The, these burners, they can get really, really nice and hot. Yeah, I tell you what, it's really, it's really top notch. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to add the cheese and I'm going to saute the jalapenos just briefly. And the reason why we saute the jalapenos is just to soften them up a little bit. So if you'd like so to go ahead. So you just do it for just, just, just a moment? Like you don't yeah, we're talking it. like 20 seconds or so. Okay. Add the cheese? Yep, we're right. going to add about half of that cheese. All right. Oh, that looks delicious. That and we're good. using sharp cheddar. So we've got our pan hot here. We're going to put in some of our jalapenos. Watch out, Ginger. I, this beautiful kitchen, we're at Builder Source Appliance Gallery in Santa Fe, where we're using this Viking kitchen. And it's really impressive. Oh, that's impressive. So we're sauteing the jalapenos. You can see that they're just kind of popping around a yeah, little bit. They did, they popped up a little bit yep. in that hot pan. And this is just to soften the jalapeno. Okay. So we've got that all set. All right. We're just gonna stir it right on into our grits. So let's go ahead and take these elk uh, tenderloins off of our grill pan. And we're going to allow them to rest. And it's important to allow your meat to rest uh, because it's going to uh, let the meat relax. Okay. If you can imagine, when you get uh, when you get the meat on, it gets very hot. It's kind of it's like running, okay? Right. And it's hot. It's ready to go. If we cut into it now, all the juices are going to flow right out. If we allow it to rest just a little bit, the meat's going to relax. The juices are going to maintain. Well, how long do you it's recommend letting it rest for, for a fillet that size? Sure. The, the, the smaller the piece of meat, the shorter it has to rest. So if we're looking at a, a you know, four or five ounce piece of, of elk, you know, two minutes. You know, I'm just asking about that because I want to get to the eating part. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Well, we should not on, delay. If you do, one thing though, if you do uh, want to rest a turkey on yes. Thanksgiving, let's say, yes. wait 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Good, good rule of thumb. All right, well, we're going to just go ahead and add some of our grits. And this is really going to be green delicious. In there. You can just see like the green and bits of cheese. Yeah, it really just Pretty color. pops out. Mm -hmm. Pretty color. All right, so we've got our grits there. And which one do you think looks best? The biggest one. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. We're going to take our knife and just slice right through. You can see the, 
the way that we've cooked it, it's a rare, yes. medium rare. I like and, medium rare. And this is perfect. Yeah. This is really going to accentuate the... Keep it wild. The, the taste of the meat. That is really pretty. Gorgeous. And letting it rest just kept that kept that color the way that it Kept the color in there, kept the juices in there. You can see that we just lost a little bit. I'm going to fan this out on top. And if you wouldn't mind grabbing those forks, I'm gonna cut another one. I'm a big guy and it's always good to have a couple pieces <laughs> of meat on there. That is really pretty. We're gonna cut across the grain of the meat. You can see that there's kind of strands that go horizontally. Yeah. I'm going to cut across the grain here. I'm going to fan it out. Why do you cut across the grain? Uh, it will lend to the, the mouth feel of it. It'll be a little bit more tender. Texture. Okay. Texture. Can we try it now? Go ahead. All right. Here. You try it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm taking that one. That was probably on your side. I took one from your side. Uh-oh. Oh, this is looking just delicious. Tom? Mmm. That might be my new favorite. Okay. I'm so glad I got through the whole segment without saying kiss my grits. <laughs> oh, I said it. Good. That was really good. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.